would you do if your government lied to you and told you that cannabis made minorities kill, rape, and pillage? Lend me your ear and I'll show you, my dear, how it saved my sweet little dog from cancer. Oh, I get high with a little help from my friends. Oh, my dog didn't die, die with a little help from my friends. Can you hear that? No, he, she's watching you lip sync. Oh, nothing. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> hey, everybody, it's Tino from My Dog Beat Cancer, Peace, Love, and Pitbulls, Healing Project, OC Consultants, my man Jesse in the house, his lovely Hello, lady. everyone. Hello. My beautiful Hello. wife, Isabel, she's Hi. joining us today. Isabel. Isabel. So we're going to get started with my man, Jesse. Go ahead. All things cool. cannabis, all things helping animals and people with cannabis oil. Right on. So today we're going to go over a couple topics. Uh, the majority of what we're going to cover today is uh, dosing. We're going to go over dosing. A lot of people were asking, you know, what is the, the real reason for doing what we do with the different compounds? And so that's what we're going to cover. Uh, before we go over that, I want to uh, just do a quick call in to uh, one of our patients that we helped. Uh, she had a dog who had a brain tumor, and that brain tumor is no longer around. Wow. And she just wanted, you know, I wanted to have her on real quick just to go over that and talk a little bit about, you know, her experience and how all that went down. Nice. Hi, Here Elizabeth. How are you doing? It's Jesse. Hey, great. How are you? Good. Uh, can you hear me okay? I can. Great. You're on the podcast with Tino and Isabel on the Flower Power Hour. I uh, want to just Hi, <laughs> just want to, uh, you know, talk a little bit about uh, Ray-Ban and how it all happened and, you know, a little, little bit of how it happened there. Absolutely. Uh, you want me just to start from the beginning? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, in, I guess, the weekend of Memorial Day in 2017, Ray-Ban had a couple of terrible, terrible seizures, which was what alerted us something was wrong. And we immediately got him to the UGA vet school. They did an MRI. And sure enough, he had a pretty nice size glioma, inoperable brain tumor, uh, chemo was not an option because chemo does not go through the brain blood barrier because it's a poison. And the only option they gave us was a five day stereotactical radiation, which we, you know, very much wanted to do, even though they shared with us that that would, at best, maybe slow the growth. We couldn't get them to say stop the growth reduce the tumor, it would maybe slow the growth and give him maybe nine months to live. But, you know, because your dog is your child, you, of course, consider doing that. We did get a second opinion, and in the meantime, I went sort of down a research rabbit hole and through Tino's awesome, awesome videos found Jesse. What was the second opinion? And Jesse. What was the second opinion? What was the second, second opinion? opinion was, the second opinion was at another um, another hospital that's here in Atlanta, and it was, yes, your dog has a brain tumor. Same no, thing, No, he will not survive it. Wow. And yes, you should do radiation. <clears throat> um, I will say that I confronted him about, because at that point I had either talked to Jesse or was in the process of finding him, and I asked him about treating dogs with brain tumors with cannabis, and he, he said that he did have some patients that had done that, but he could not recommend it because, as we all know, they'll lose their license if they recommend it. Mm -hmm. And so I posed the question another way and just said, well, given what you've seen in different results, if it were your dog, would you do it? And he said yes. Awesome. So that that was very refreshing to me. I was I had already I think I was already in the process of starting the treatment at that point, or I was waiting to figure out how to how to do it. 
And um, so we did decide to go ahead and go with the university vet school because they had a, a better, mach- you know, radiation machine that does five days of stereo tactical versus this other hospital that it would be weeks and he'd have to go, you know, two or three days a week and it would go on for weeks because it wasn't stereo tactical, which means it just hits the tumor and it's a lot stronger. So I did find Jesse after that had been scheduled and he immediately said, we're going to get rid of your dog's brain tumor. I thought he was crazy, but I, uh, you know, was on the phone with him and thought, well, I'm crazy too. And what have I got to lose? He did say, save your money and cancel the radiation, which I couldn't convince myself to do. So we did do that. But in the meantime, uh, started Ray-Ban on cannabis. We started the CBD oil as, you know, Jesse recommends first to build tolerance and then added in once he, you know, built up a little bit of tolerance, added in THC oil and built up from there. He was on a lot of anti-seizure meds as well. He was on high phenobarbital. He was on Keppra and even prednisone from the inflammation for the radiation, all of which I I titrated down pretty quickly. I mean, it scared the hell out of me because I never wanted to see another seizure like he had had. He never had another one, and we got him off of all of the pharmaceuticals, just continued getting great advice from Jesse, and three and a half half months later, um, had another MRI, and to the surprise of the vet school, it was gone completely. And um, they just, you know, without, without telling me to treat him with cannabis, the vet said, keep doing whatever you're doing. Just keep doing whatever you're doing. And um, so that's what I did. And that's what saved him, 100%. I know that I feel 100% sure I did not need to do the radiation. And um, the same result would have happened. Now, some people are going to probably wonder, Elizabeth, because you did do some radiation, how many sessions or treatments did you do of that? So that is, um, the one that he did was five days. It was each day. He stayed at the vet school for those five days. It was Monday through Friday. They would, you know, they had to put him under, so they kept him there because it was over a pretty short period of time. I did... I snuck over to visit, quote, visit him as soon as I got the uh, CBD oil. And when they left the room, shot some in his mouth. I remember. He only got it that one (laughs) Wednesday. I remember. And when they came back, I know they could smell it. (laughs) It does have an odor, but they didn't say a word to me. And, you know, then he came home Friday night, and that's when, you know, it was like, here we go. Let's do this. And I was very nervous about it. I mean, very nervous. But... You know, the more you do something, the more comfortable you get, and you realize you, you know, you follow the protocol. You really can't mess it up as long as you're doing it. And, um, and you know, if you, if there are a couple of extra drops in there or a couple of less, you're still giving it to them. And so it, you know, it's it's working. It's working on the endocannabinoid receptor system and. Um, once you add in the THC, the apoptosis is occurring where they're working together, the entourage effect, and it's, it's making the cancer cells commit suicide and die. And that is as much as I know about it as far as my research. I'm not a doctor or a vet, but I know enough to be dangerous. And Man, big words. you learned a lot. Yes. You are awesome. <laughs> Elizabeth Tater. Elizabeth, um, Elizabeth yes. what kind of dog is Ray-Ban? He is a mutt. He's a he mutt. Looks like Beautiful a, mutt, though. And how old like is a coyote? And how old is Ray Ban? He is nine or ten. Nine we or rescued ten. him from the um, Humane Society. All right, sorry, I was trying to do a live broadcast on Instagram, which I'm doing now, so I'm going to catch up some people who are watching right now. Ray Ban got a brain tumor in his head, in his brain. Uh, the doctor told you he had how long to live? Nine months. No, yes. about, I think they gave him a little bit of a 9 to 12 month nine to 12 with months. the radiation. And and you did no radiation, you did cannabis oil, right? 
Um, did some radiation. Did some you did some radiation. Yeah. You did, did cannabis oil. Yeah, we did the stereotactical five days of radiation. Five yeah. days of radiation, and you did the can, uh, the cannabis oil. What kind of food were you feeding? Originally, I was just feeding him uh, kibble, okay. but I also, I'm just an avid researcher, and he went straight to protein. Anything I could find, whether it was tuna fish, sardines. So you saw my video, protein. you saw my video where about Shorty? Would you see that when you just did a Google search? Um... Yeah, I was Google searching. I found your Facebook page mm -hmm. and your YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. Watched every single one of them. Ordered the Dr. Dressler's Cancer Survival Guide immediately. That's what I was going to um, ask you. So did you Jesse. did you follow Dressler's diet? Not completely because okay. I didn't. I mean, I think that he allows a little bit of leeway. Right. I want to say maybe brown rice or yes, something. Yes. I was I was picking the uh, cranberries out of the dog food that I could find that was pretty much all protein because right. I was a little bit, you know, over the top. Okay. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to... he eats that. I just wanted yeah. to catch up the people on Instagram because we're doing a live from the Instagram and we have three people watching. So, yeah, for those of you who just joined in, um, we're doing the uh, Flower Power Hour uh, podcast talking about cannabis oil for dogs. We're going to post this on our Facebook pages. But if you have any questions, anybody watching, feel free to ask them here. I'm going to hand this back over to Jesse. Thank you, Elizabeth. I'm going to hand this back to Jesse. Sure. So a couple more things just real quick, Elizabeth. Uh, as we were going through treatment, just so other people can understand, uh, the way that we titrated almost all of the drugs that Ray-Ban was on, I had given you those instructions, right? And That's correct. Right. Yeah, we and talked. So, I mean, we, we either texted or talked when I would adjust things just right. to make sure. So the, the big thing that I want to, the takeaway from, you know, what you experienced with Ray-Ban and to help other people, I think is, you know, as we get started, yeah, it's scary because you haven't done, usually most people haven't done something like this, you know, treat their dog with cannabis oil. But at some point they end up having to become confident in the way that they dose, knowing that it's not going to hurt their dog. And this is the point of the story is, no matter what we do with treatment, people, there is no way, no how that we can hurt your dog with cannabis oil. The opposite. If we don't get your dog on some kind of treatment, your dog will decline. That's one of the things that I kind of, uh, you know, my wife, she's here with us now, but she'll tell you, I mean, when I'm at home, I hear people are more concerned about cannabis oil than they are about their dog's health. And that kind of throws me off sometimes. And so what I'm, I'm trying to convey now is that you know, people, they are nervous in the beginning. They do have these feelings of, well, what's going to happen? And, you know, is this the right treatment option and that sort of thing? But at some point, you yourself, Elizabeth, you figured out that this was working and it was doing the right thing for your dog, right? That's right. And I did, I mean, one thing I did was I continually read just to reinforce. I read, I found people Facebook groups where they have cured their cancers. I continued to... Even the day of the MRI, the follow-up MRI, when I was so nervous to see what the results were going to be, I was reading human posts like, you know, there's some other groups where people have cured themselves too. And I, all mm -hmm. the success stories I could find, I would read. And You're just thought great. positively, thought positively mm -hmm. through the treatment. When, you know, when I first started adding in the THC, Ray-Ban would sleep really hard. And I could either let that scare me and be nervous and freak out and worry or... I could visualize the cancer cells committing suicide, killing them. And nice. I was just that it's hard, it's nice. hard it's work perfect. killing cancer, <clears throat> and that's what he's doing. And so, you know, I just felt like the more positive I could be and the more I visualized the cancer dying, the better. It's, so, it's um, exactly what you got to do. Point. Yes. That is awesome. So, And I am not a type A person, but if I've ever been regimented about something, it was this. <laughs> oh, it, you were too. Off, uh, you kept sure. diligent notes. I remember That's you right. had a spreadsheet and wow. uh, yeah. Yeah, she wrote everything down. So, yeah. so yeah. another takeaway is as we get going with treatment, as we start to go down the journey of treating the dog with cannabis, so doing your due diligence when it comes to treatment and dosing and asking questions and doing research, it's very important. You know, people at some point put a lot of pressure on me to help save their dog, but I think it's a kind of a two-way street. They need to do their homework. They need to be confident. They need to implement the things that mm -hmm. I ask them to do. And at some point, 
Just the medicine, yeah, the medicine does its thing. Right. And so, well, thank Absolutely. you. Thank you yeah. so much, Elizabeth. I think uh, what we're going to talk about next is dosing. So thank you so much for being on the show. I know Great. we wanted to have you on way, way earlier, but uh, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take thank care. You. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Awesome. So, yeah, uh, now going over dosing or going back to dosing, for me at least, the, the, the more important thing when it comes to dosing is understanding the big picture. When we have people that come on board and they're just starting, they have so many questions. They don't know what to expect. And, and really the reality of all of it is it's very safe. There's nothing that can go wrong other than if we don't start because of your own fears and you don't right. want to do something because you think it's going to do something to your dog. Yeah. And, and that's another thing, guys, guys, guys. Please don't put your fears onto your dog. Yeah, they don't there's there's a, a big, big like push that my wife and I always try and do, which is as we get talking to people for the first time, we try and infuse them with energy that's going to give them at least some type of positivity so they can right. be receptive so that once we get started, their fears don't interfere with what we're trying mean. to do. Yeah, it, and it's happened before. Uh, so just going over a couple of the topics that people wanted to talk about. Uh, the first part is the big picture of what is the dosing? Why do we dose dogs with CBD and THC? Why is it important? So, oh, sorry, guys. Uh, so just based off of the science, there is a very clear understanding that we do need to have a compound that looks like THC and one that looks like CBD mm -hmm. to make ochpoctosis happen, which is basically yeah, right. the cell death of the cancer. Ochpoctosis? How do you pronounce it? Apoptosis. Apoptosis. Apop. It's the Apoptosis. basically the cell going through a self uh, starvation mode where the, the cell basically implodes from not Stay eating and it, and it allows itself to die off. Right. And that's basically it. But the body will then after it dies, it will reabsorb it into the bloodstream and then get rid of it as toxins. Now, here's the big uh, the big thing that happens to some dogs whenever we start, whether it's a type of lymphoma, leukemia, even brain tumors, when we get started, what happens is because we're detoxifying the body of not only heavy metals, right. calcification in the penile gland, uh, anything else that's, that the dog's dealing with, maybe they're on chemo and they've been absorbing a bunch of heavy, heavy metals. Those toxins, as they get out of the body, will actually make the dog sicker in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So I've seen dogs that start and two, three days later, they don't want to eat. Mm. They don't want to they don't get out of bed. All they want to do is sleep. Uh, they, they have diarrhea. They might even vomit. Yeah. These things happen because if you can imagine going through a detox process of years and years of built up stuff Compiled. on top of the cancer. Sure. And so now the dog is going through what they call Herxheimer's reaction. They're, they're having this reaction where they're becoming very toxic and they're, they're feeling worse now. Guess what, guys? That'll pass. So in the very beginning, as we get started, things happen. The body's getting adjusted not only to the euphoric reaction of the THC, but the body's actually dealing with the healing process itself, which is doing two things. We're healing the body, which is making it feel great, but we're also getting rid of the cancer, which is making the dog feel kind of yucky. Yeah. So the balance happens somewhere in the middle of the dosing. When we get the dosing up to the proper amount, which is basically the way that we've figured out the dosing is, you know, we got to climb a ladder, right? You start off with CBD in the very beginning. Give that dog the ability to just have some healing well, properties. It's a, it's a progression of health. So you start in the beginning and you can continue. And, and so the majority of in the very beginning is just healing. We're not killing a, to a ton of cancer, but we're doing it so that we can help the dog feel better. Because if your dog could talk and tell you exactly how your dog felt, then you would be able to go, man, this is exactly what my dog needs right. based off of what your dog. It's not going to happen. So we have to then not only be safe with how we dose, but we have to give that dog enough so that we see reactions that are positive and that the dog is doing what it's supposed to be doing eating regularly drinking water behaving normally all that kind of stuff you give the dog way too much too soon now you're going to have those side effects that people are worried that's about what was, that's what i was just thinking because everybody wants to do it right now everybody wants it yeah, this minute but healing can't. happens not this second it no happens. there's there's no way yeah. there's no way when when i it. hear people tell me 
hey, Jesse, we're on day three. Can I give my dog more? And I'm like, well, we're, we're already increasing it daily and we will eventually get to that dosage. And then I don't hear from them for a couple of days. And then I hear back, hey, guess what? I did give my dog a little too much. And now there was this reaction. And now I'm, I had to back off and I got a little derailed. And, this, and they got scared. They got scared, right. So, yeah. guys, at some point, it's basically a very fine line that we have to walk in the very beginning because you don't know me and you've never done this. It's a trust walk. You guys have to trust that what I've been doing for the last several years right. has been working and it's not always going to do what we think it's going to do. You know, sometimes we want we have the best intentions when we start. Try and give your dog the medicine as, as uh, gradually as possible. Mm -hmm. But then the dog... For whatever reason, we stop prednisone, we, you know, the app change diet or the cancer is starting to get better. Right. We don't know. Uh, the dog sometimes goes backwards. And so the parent will get scared and we stop and we now we're where do we leave off? Yeah. Where are we at? Push yeah. Down. And so the better thing is if if there's ever issues, guys, if, if we get started and we're on treatment and your dog's being, you know, good. And then at some point it, something goes wrong contact me. I know a lot of people feel like, hey, Jesse's so busy that I can't get a hold of him and this and that. But it, a text message. A text message is, is all it takes. If you guys yeah. get a hold of me, I'll get, yeah, I am busy, but you know, there's, there's always a place for me to get a hold of you guys. Definitely. Um, and it's important to understand that your dog's not going to die from, no. from weed, from cannabis oil. Absolutely. If you give him a little too much, they're going to be, they're going to eat more. <laughs> Maybe they're going to hit the munchies. They're going to freak out. Best thing to do, Put on Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. <laughs> just wait it out. Yeah, you let him relax through it. Yeah. You let him just absorb yeah. it and heal and mm -hmm. just, you know. Yeah. The, the way that we've seen other dogs when we've started the treatment, in the very beginning when it's just CBD, the dog feels great. Now, here's another subject that I did want to talk about. Some people want to go back to the CBD from hemp. They say, well, you know, this is all I can get. Yeah, Why right. not use the CBD from hemp? Somebody else had asked me, well, what's the difference? So here's the basic idea between the two. Uh, CBD that comes from hemp is grown in a way where there's no THC. They, they try and say there's under a certain amount, but let's be honest, there's nothing. That lack of THC doesn't allow that CBD to become synergistic enough to cause that reaction of apoptosis in the body, any vertebrae. I don't believe so. Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, Rick Simpson, who, and I'm not giving him props, but the guy doesn't even believe in CBD working. And I think it's because he only knows about the CBD from hemp. Now, the CBD from cannabis, that, as a matter of fact, that I know for a fact needs to be in, in the picture because just the other day, we were helping somebody out and I'm not going to name any names, but this person that we were helping had the ability of getting their own CBD. They were getting it from me, but they thought, well, maybe I can use this stuff. It's local and, and it's, it's a little cheaper and, and we can use it. They're here in California. And so they got some CBD and it's supposed to be the greatest stuff. But a day later, the dog starts to decline. The mass that was there originally that was kind of small started blowing up. Within a day, wow. the next day it was even bigger. They, he even texted me, hey, I'm at the emergency at the vet clinic. What do I need to do? Because this thing's going to, I go, what'd you do? What'd you, anything? Yeah, well, I changed it. I, I started my own seat. Yeah. I go, well, I don't know. And I'm not 100% sure, but that could be the reason why. He came over to the house, picked up some more CBD. We started that. His dog is doing amazing again. So, and that CBD that he got was from cannabis. So, First of all, if it's from hemp, let's not even talk about it because we're trying to deal with cancer here. Now, if you're dealing with a headache, grab it, take it. It's good for you. But if you cannot get the CBD from cannabis, then at some point, then we have to just try whatever you can get. Ideally, it needs to come from cannabis because that's really the only thing I've ever seen. I haven't seen hemp work. I mean, we would hear about it in the news. Hey, guess what? Hemp CBD is curing cancer. True. Guess what? Jump on that bandwagon, whatever. Uh, it's just not happening. I wish it would. Then people would have it available to them just about anywhere. But it doesn't. Uh, the only thing I've ever seen is the, the cannabis CBD. So, guys, bottom line has to be from cannabis, needs to contain a ton of THC. It has to also. Now, that's just the basic. On top of that, we got to add in more THC. So 
let me go a little further back in, in time and in how my wife and I actually came up with a lot of these dosing regimens that we have come up with. Um, those ideas that we came up with were based off of the dog's weight, mm -hmm. the dog's uh, cancer, what type of cancer, mm -hmm. and how is the dog doing? So we started with those three uh, variables that allowed us to determine what, how to dose that dog. And, and from there, we started adding more variables. We're up to like maybe 10 variables now that we use in order to help us determine where do we start with dosing, how fast do we need to go, and what is the, the end game? What is the dosage amount that we're trying to reach? Because without knowing any of that, people, you're guessing. You know, and I, I know a lot of you are trying your best to help your dogs with cannabis oil and, and all that, but there has to be a, me a, a method to the madness. And so that's what we've done. We've come up with these strategies, these dosing regimens that at this point are working. Why? I honestly feel because we've taken the time to kind of analyze those things that have been working. And at some point we, we tested them. Is and it working? communication. The parents come back and tell us, you know, how this is working, how it's not working. We need to adjust. We don't need to adjust. You know, we come up with the plan all the time. Yeah. And, and. So right now what we're hoping to do is give people an understanding of what to expect as we get started, right? So in the very beginning, as we get started, we're going to have a conversation. I'm going to get to know you. I'll figure out, you know, if we can even help you because some dogs, uh, let's say we have a dog that has, um, oh, it's hard to say because it's, it's just it, something common, it's something common, you lymphoma. know, let, yeah. yeah, let's say the dog has lymphoma. How old? Dog's 12 years old. Dog's been on chemo for four months. Dog hasn't eaten in a month. Okay. Dog has lost a bunch of weight and the lymph nodes are super huge. And, so, and the dog's been on a bunch of different chemicals that are okay. prescription drugs, prednisone, whatever else. Those dogs, and I'm not trying to discourage people, but those dogs, because let's think about it, people. There's a lot going against that dog. The health. Right. the prescription drugs, not eating, not drinking. So yes, that dog's going to have a hard time adjusting to the cannabis oil. Now, if you have a dog that is eating, drinking water, pretty much behaving normal, still not really noticing that he's sick, she's sick, those dogs are going to do better. It's just because they feel better right off the bat and we can get to them in a more expeditious way. We get the dosing right. up to the right amount faster and that dog usually does better. But here's the thing. We've helped dogs that have been at stage four, one week, prognosis, whatever, hasn't eaten in two weeks, and they still do great. Yeah, but that's when the parents are, like, on it. Oh, yeah. You know, they're on the food. They're on what, what time of day that they're giving it. They're, you know, giving them all love and sunshine. I mean, it's just. And that's the thing. Guys, Tino, you know this. you got to be positive, <laughs> yeah, man. Because yeah. I, I, I've talked to people on the phone where they're crying. Yeah. Yep. And their dog is right there. And I know yep. the dog's yep. like, Here what's him. going on, mom? Yep. Why are you yep. crying? Yep. Yeah, they're connected <laughs> yep. on a level. Yep. And it's just like, I feel what you feel. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, it's really hard for me to be positive because my name, it, no is in my name, Tino. <laughs> so thanks, mom. Um, yeah. But uh, I told people, I, I, without getting all Eastern philosophy, woo-woo, you got to be positive. I mean, as being a dog trainer, your, I tell people all the time, your dog picks up on your energy. If here's, this is the funny, this is the joke. Um, my dog doesn't like black people. This this girl says, <laughs> no, no, no. Your dog is responding to you, <laughs> responding to black people. Absolutely. Every time you see black people, you freak out or you get a tense, <laughs> and your and that. your dog goes, oh look, it's a black person, and my mom is Every afraid time. of him. So you need to be very. I always tell people Mindful. all the time. Just nothing but comedies. Turn on comedies. Turn on Joe Rogan. Uh, <laughs> turn on, yeah. turn on anything that's gonna make you laugh and keep you up in spirits. And then when I when Shorty first got uh, lymphoma, I I I've, I said this before. If you've seen these podcasts before, I was laying on the couch with her, you know, kind of being all moping around and feeling sorry for ourselves. And she was laying on top of me. It was in the summer of 2015. And I was like, nope, we're, that, we're not going to do this. And we got up and we went out and we went swimming. Here's a dog that had lymph, lymph, lymph nodes that were popping out and you could see them. Eight weeks to live, she was given. By the way, if you're just tuning in, five-year anniversary, this last March 14th, that my dog was given eight weeks to live. 
And when you said we've brought in, we've brought dogs back from the brink, that's one of them. Yeah. I mean, there's a woman in our um, in our group that ha- her dog has a hermangiosarcoma. I lost my boy in 2012 to hermangiosarcoma, and that dog is still around her dog. And it breaks my heart because I know if I had got to this two years sooner, he would he would have made it a little bit longer. So be positive. Don't right. mope around. Keep your schedule. Your dog knows you get up and go to work at this time. Do that. I mean, you're not doing it now, but, <laughs> you know, keep your schedule. Be positive. Be Have fun. Lots of comedy. Just just don't be moping around because your dog needs you to be strong. Well, on top of that, let's say it's lymphoma. Lymphoma, because people don't realize it, or not all people, but some people don't realize this, the body doesn't have a natural pumping station in the lymphatic system. It only works when the dog's mobile. So as the dog moves around, it it helps those lymph nodes pump the fluid out of it massage as they get yeah. As, and on top of that, you can massage the yeah. lymph nodes and get them to de-swell faster as well. But the the thing is, you you're right. We have to get the dog to do what it normally does because that's how we're going to get the blood to flow. That's how we're going to get that medicine to get where it needs to get to. And we have to have that dog feeling good. The the point when it comes to doing cannabis oil in the very beginning is not so much we're killing cancer and the dog's going to live 100 years old. It's let's help that dog feel good in the beginning. Right. If we can do that, if the dog can feel better in the first week or so, guess what? We're already on top of, you know, we're, we've already gone. If the curve was to then steady decline and the dog was eventually going to pass away, we're at least going baseline or we're going on a curve going up. Nice. That's the thing that I tell people. If you're afraid if you're worried if you're concerned about whether or not this is the right treatment option for you or your dog just realize that a there's no real negative uh, side effect or really any danger to taking Mm -hmm. this you know type of uh, medicine to help you but b on top of that we've seen results you know people have seen results that Mm -hmm. they've told they've come back and said hey jesse i don't know if this the cannabis oil or not and I don't know if I'm being too premature, but my dog is doing this. My dog's behaving this way and the mass or whatever is slowly but surely disappearing, whatever. And I, I don't even know, right? Because it could be something else. I don't know. But I usually come back with, well, let's stay on track with dosing. Let's continue doing what we're doing and let's keep staying positive, right? Mm-hmm. So at some point, if the medicine is doing what it's doing, we will see that in the future. And that's really the thing is, we got to we got to stick to the plan. We got to do what we're supposed to do with the medicine. But at some point, being patient and knowing that it's going to work is key to it, because you will actually see that for yourself in the very beginning. Seeing your dog behave like a better version of himself after you've seen him mope around and not eat and not drink, not want to get out of bed. That's encouraging. People will see that and say, well, at least I see my dogs behaving a little better. That, that gives me confidence that it's doing something. Well, guess what, people? That confidence should carry you all the way to the very end, to the remission stage, because it does work. So uh, without going off subject, uh, prednisone. Somebody was asking, well, how do we interact with prednisone when we get started with treatment? So prednisone, as as some people know, usually given for uh, inflammation reasons. It's a very strong steroid. It reduces inflammation in a couple different ways, but it's also very harmful to the liver. It does cause some other side effects when it comes to muscle wasting, stuff like that. So what I tell people, because they wonder, my vet has told me, let's start prednisone and I want to get him up to this dosage amount. Mm -hmm. So people, here's what I got to say about that. When it comes to prednisone and your dog's health, it's temporary. If your dog's not feeling good, and hasn't eaten in a while because the lymphatic fluid's in the body and it's just making your dog feel yucky. If we give a little bit of prednisone, a very small amount, it'll reduce that inflammation and now the dog feels better. That's the goal. The goal is we're not going to cure your dog with prednisone, but we can help them feel better. So let's do it in the beginning. That's what we did too. huh? We did a little tiny bit of... Maybe well, with Shorty, with Shorty... No, we didn't. With Shorty, no. She was on prednisone. Yeah. And I got her off at a few, maybe two or three months into using the oil. And then, so if you're dealing with prednisone, anybody, I mean, dealing with lymphoma with your dog, you, you'll you notice, check all the lymph nodes. And I didn't even know there were lymph nodes where I found them. So she had these huge here, here, and then in her groin, and then on the back of her legs. Wow, so she had all of them. The ones on the back of her legs took the longest to go the way. The one in her crotch, they felt like two pucks, like, like hockey pucks. It was the weirdest thing. Wow. So... After we, we were on prednisone, we were doing the cannabis oil, 
these went down really quick. These, this went down really quick. These took the longest. And then about, I don't know, maybe six months, maybe a year into the oil, I was off the prednisone and then I something one of them some of them came back. I can't remember which one it were. Maybe they were these ones. And I went back on the prednisone. So for a little bit. So I got people asking me, when did you get off prednisone? How did you use it? Um, we used it at for the first few months and she lost muscle. Her head God, I should have taken it before and after. I remember she was real skinny in her, her face. Her head it just looked concaved, like the top of her head. Actually I should be doing these these camera up here. Concaved and then and then once we went back when we when we got off the prednisone, we went on the we were on the oil, and then the dog cancer survival guide, she filled out again. But uh, yeah, so for those wondering about the prednisone, we were kind of off and on a couple of times for yeah, and it's and it's okay to give your dog prednisone, but what I'm saying is the vets because they think at this point your dog has lymphoma and your dog doesn't have much time. Let's give your dog the best possible life, which you know God bless the vets, but they they do it in a way where they overdo it with the prednisone and now if your dog weighs uh, 50 yeah, pounds and they insane. give your dog 60 milligrams of prednisone daily that's too much so what i normally recommend is if we're gonna start cannabis oil as a treatment then let's give your dog a little bit of prednisone in the very beginning get that started while you, you're waiting to get you know acquire the medicine the cannabis oil and as we get going in into the treatment with cannabis oil, we will eventually titrate that prednisone and get off of it uh, and then at that point, we're on cannabis oil only, and it does a better job, you know. So prednisone is is fine to give your dogs, guys. It's okay, but it's not a solution that's long-term. Yeah, you don't want to stay on it. No, no. no. So uh, maintenance dose. People were asking, yeah. So yeah. Uh, the the usual course is we Before go. Before you do maintenance, yeah, yeah. why don't you address that, uh, that picture up there? I'm going to take this and cool. show this to the people who are watching. Uh, if you're watching and you've been a part of the uh, Dog Cancer Survival Guide or the, in the, um, the My Dog Beat Cancer, when we say grain of rice, half grain of rice size, that's what we're talking about right there. Um, that's the FICO full extract cannabis oil. That's what we're using to cure our dogs, to help our dogs, to make our dogs feel better. Fe Go ahead. FECO. So Feco. what is FECO? Uh, FECO is an acronym, guys. Feco. Let's not get too wrapped up in you know the actual verbiage here because people want to call feco a compound like on its own like it's thc feco and cbd no 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 so feco just talks about how the medicine is extracted out of the plant material which is a full extract cannabis oil of the the medicine now usually feco implies that it's the strongest of the strongest there are others You've heard of distillate, isolates, but those are extracted in a different way, and they basically take out a lot of the medicine. This is really the best format in the stronger versions of medicines that you can get. Now, if you can only get the distillates and isolates, fine, but this is preferred. FECO, RSO, you've heard of RSO, Rick Simpson oil. That's different. It implies that it's mainly THC and that it's extracted using some other form of extraction. Uh, remind me. Napta. Napta. Mm -hmm isopropyl butane, butane. uh you know hexane. Hexane. hexane there's all sorts of different uh solutions and and uh different mediums that people can use to extract the the medicine out of the plant we don't recommend anything that you wouldn't want to ingest that is naturally made somehow gasoline i don't want to put in my system it so residue. yeah so on the screen can they see it nolan the screen yeah. So on the screen, you guys see there's a what looks like a syringe of some type, and it's got a little cap on it. It says uh, from the that one gradation from one spot to the other, which is from the very top to the bottom, it's 0 0.05 mLs. It's hard to quantify that because we're talking less than one mL. So we're looking at a fraction of a milliliter, which is what the entire contents of that syringe is inside of that milliliter there's roughly one gram it's about the same conversion one gram of medicine now in that one gram if you're trying to decide and people always ask me how do I know how much to give my dog this is why it is very difficult to understand FECO in the very beginning stages because it's so concentrated the difference between a small drop and a big drop can be 15 20 30 milligrams so now if you think, well, 
I have this stuff my buddy got me and it's RSO, it's it's THC, and I'm going to give my doggy a little drop. Know this, guys. If you're going to give your dog a little drop, before you do that, give it to yourself. Try it yourself. See what happens with you. Because that's the exact same feeling your dog's going to have. <laughs> so, and, and maybe even worse because dog's your dog's, of the moon. Yeah, your dog's smaller than you, your X amount of, you know, a couple hundred pounds and your dog's only 40, yeah. 50 pounds. So keep that in mind, guys. I know a lot of people are trying to do their own medicine and trying to dose, but let's be smart. Let's give your dog something that is mild to start with and yeah. work up and dose it. So the next slide, can they see the, the other one as well? So the... The other slide is is talking about two rice grains. So the difference between one rice grain and two rice grains is literally the amount divided by the entire syringe. What I mean by that is the only real way to figure out what you're giving in that one rice grain of medicine is to do math, guys. You cannot just guess it. You cannot. So let's say, for example, that syringe contains 500 milligrams of CBD and the syringe has 20 rice grains of uh, feco in it. We know this because one rice grain is 0.5. You add them all up. There's 20 rice grains in one ml or one gram of medicine. Now, if we do the math, 500 divided by, uh, 20. by 20, then we're really coming up with 25 milligrams per rice grain. Pretty simple. Here's the problem. The difference between 20 and 25, 20 and 30 uh, milligrams on that one rice grain could be a very, very small amount that your eye won't even be able to recognize. So it's important as we get started, when you guys decide you want to use the FECO, let's get there gradually. Let's move into that in a way where the dog gets it, you know, introduced gradually. Right. Uh, you don't want to overdo it. Uh, so yeah, that's FECO. The FECO that, that we normally recommend to start with is just CBD FECO. So backing up a little bit, within the FECOs, you can have different types of FECO. Just like the tinctures. Exactly. So you can have CBD FECO, mm -hmm. sativa FECO, indica FECO, hybrid, one-to-ones, 20-to-ones, whatever. Right. It's like buying a pair of you know pants. You can buy any style. You can buy any style or any combination of the FECO. When you get started, if you're going to use FECO from the very beginning, then get CBD. That's it. You, If you go to a dispensary and they tell you, hey, man, we have some good RSO, uh, it's about 20% THC and about 2 to 3% CBD. Just know, guys, that's not the right stuff. It'll get your dog too high, too fast, bad reaction. You'll get worried. You'll want to stop. And yep. that's kind of where it ends. Your dog will freak out. Yeah. So remember... The thing you want to do to your dog is basically what you would want somebody to do you if you were that dog. And so you got to take it easy. You got to make sure that if they're not eating, they're not drinking, if they're high because they look high, don't just laugh it off. I've heard people say, ah, my dog got yeah. high. And it's a funny. Your dog didn't think it was funny. Yeah, yeah. True. Your dog didn't think it was funny at all. So, <laughs> guys, be safe. Even though there's no serious or harmful or dangerous reaction. It, yeah. It still kind of sucks. If you've ever had it, it yeah. sucks. Yeah, especially when you ingest. <laughs> yeah. So. What about the tinctures and all of the THC content? Inside oh, them? yeah. So tinctures. Okay. What is a tincture? Mm -hmm. Tinctures, in most cases, if you go to a dispensary, that tincture is going to be alcohol-based. Understand this, people. Here's a, a very big difference between alcohol-based tinctures and coconut or medium-chain triglyceride tinctures this all sounds foreign to people but a tincture is basically an essence of some type of a spirit that's being uh, uh, suspended in this oil or alcohol so you extract it and then at some point it stays into that medium and and that's what you're going to use to to dose those medicines in the very beginning need to be understood we need to know what we have People will tell me, hey, I can go to my dispensary and get A, B, and C. Okay. Now, at that point, do we really know what it is? Yeah. Because the label will tell you one thing. What they're really doing to it is another thing. And, and the final product and how you dose can give you the, a very different reaction, too. So it's important that as we get going and we get started with the, the tinctures, those tinctures that you use should be almost identical 
to the fecal that you're eventually going to use. And what I mean by that is if you're going to have a strain of tincture in, in the tincture format, say for CBD, and you're using a strain like ACDC, which is a great strain, uh, has a lot of THC in it, and it's CBD uh, dominant. We use that in a tincture format. We're going to want to transition to the fecal mm -hmm. and get CB, ACDC in that fecal version as well. Because some people, because of what they can get, they'll start off with a certain tincture CBD. Uh, say it's a Holy Grail or it's a God's Gift or Harlequin, whatever. And then they'll transition to something stronger and different. And so the dog will have a reaction off of that. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it is very complicated, guys, when it comes to understanding because you haven't done it or maybe you've tried it and you've had some results and you know you're not sure if those results came from what you did but at some point just being cautious about how you give your dog the medicine is the biggest thing you never want to start off with hey my dog weighs 200 pounds and i'm going to give my dog this much it's no dude don't even if your dog weighs 150 pounds always start off with a very very small amount just the smallest amount that you can start for two yeah. reasons. You want to see how they react to that small amount. Mm -hmm. And then you want to see if they like the flavor. Because some dogs, yeah. as you get started, if they don't like the flavor, they're going to run away from you when yeah. you try and give yeah. them the, the medicine. Yeah. So uh, a yeah. lot of info, guys. Uh, somebody had asked about hormonal type of cancers as well. I've heard uh, you know, people talk about breast cancer, mammary cancer, adenos, and stuff like that, where uh, they're usually driven by estrogen. And that's what they say. I don't know because I'm not a doctor or a vet and I've never been in the medical field, but here's what I've seen works. When it comes to estrogen, supposed estrogen driven cancers, mm. it's more important that we give that dog or that person CBD right off the bat. And the, the game changer is going to be CBD. It's got to be from cannabis, but cannabis. that's not, not, yeah. Yeah. Cannabis, not, not hemp, no. cannabis, no. not no. hemp, not from the grocery store, cannabis, <laughs> not, not gas station. hemp. If you not order it online, it's hemp, <laughs> cannabis, not hemp. Everybody on my dog, on my dog beat cancer on healing on <laughs> OC. I get the, I see this question all the time. I got hemp. Okay, will this work? I found this online. If you're getting online, if they're shipping it directly to your door, it is hemp. You got to right. get cannabis oil, cannabis hemp, cannabis, oh God, cannabis hemp, cannabis CBD, cannabis THC. That's it. Can't say it enough. So why is it that we can't get CBD from cannabis? Uh, at this point, it's still considered a Schedule One drug because of the content of THC that's in it, and therefore the government does not allow certain states to have it, yeah. and even in some states that they. They are allowed to, like California, Florida, some other, Washington. Uh, those states, because CBD is not normally what you would go to a, a dispensary to buy to get euphoric and feel high, they don't provide it as much, even though, in my opinion, it's the most crucial compound. Uh, you'll go to a dispensary and try to find some good CBD, and you're going to end up with hemp again. Mm -hmm. It's weird. You'll go to a dispensary and I didn't still, know that. The dispensaries yeah. are selling hemp Dude, CBD? Dude, you can get flour. I didn't even know this. You can get flour hemp. How in the hell do you get flour hemp? <laughs> so there's some weird stuff happening because there's a CBD wow. store by my our house. And I went in and I talked to the guy. And I'm like, what is this all about, right? Hemp CBD. That's all they sell is hemp CBD. And I looked at it and, oh, my God, it looked, it smelled, it acted just like normal flour CBD. But if you smoked it, if you try to make oil out of it and you take it, it's not going to do anything, which is weird. I don't get it. You know, I, you know, if you're trying to produce, I didn't, know. I didn't yeah. know that the dispensaries didn't sell cannabis CBD. Well, no, they might sell it, but now, but they have hemp. They have hemp. They have a lot of hemp. That's they'll have crazy. two sections. They'll have the hemp side, and then they'll have. Well, this is the real strong CBD here. <laughs> Let's try that. Uh. And then that, sometimes because they're making it for dogs, they'll add bacon flavor. They'll uh, add some sure. weird terpenes yeah. and stuff like that. And so those flavors, they change the composition of the medicine. Uh, now it's not as medicinal. Yeah, right. And usually yeah. those types of medicines are extracted from a CBD that's been isolated. So yeah. uh, earlier I had mentioned FECO being one of the m stronger compounds. There are other ones that are out there, but they're extracted in a way where they remove the chlorophyll, the terpenes, the uh, lipids, the good 
all the good stuff that the plant material has in it, they take it away. And now yeah. you're left with a very, very clean and pure CBD or THC. But it's worthless. But it's, it's, in my opinion, those are specifically made to get you euphoric. The CBD, why even bother to get isolated CBD if it's not going to be medicinal? Now you're back in, you're getting cannabis CBD and turn it into like a hemp. It's like drinking near beer. What, it's what's weird. The point? It's weird. And and people are, hey, people are going to debate this. I know they are. They're going to say, hey, Jesse, you're crazy, dude. I believe different. And, and here's the thing. I've actually talked to people who own and make and have yeah. CBD companies all over the world. I've talked to Europe. I've talked to people in Thailand. I've talked to people in, in all over the world. And they, the main thing is, hey, we got this full spectrum whole plant cbd it's the best in the world right hemp. and i'm like <laughs> okay i don't care about any of that is it cannabis or hemp well they said it's full spectrum it that doesn't make it cannabis they say it's it's a full plant or a whole plant x that doesn't make what well, makes it it's one or the other that's it i can't stress that enough if it says it's hemp on the freaking label on the bottle on anywhere it's not cannabis. Yeah, look, we're not knocking hemp for those of you watching. It's just for, the <laughs> for inflammation, whatever. Muscles, no, yeah, whatever. yeah. But you're killing but, cancers. That's what we. Need. No, so we're we're talking about cancer. When right you're now. dealing when you're dealing with illness and so many, so many illnesses, um, we you you got to have it from cannabis. I mean, we can't stress that enough. Uh, I started my dog beat cancer. Um, because my dog beat it five years ago. She was given eight weeks to live. We had a hu I have a huge following on Facebook with Peace, Love, and Pit Bulls. Um, so I stake my name, the the organization on it. So you had mentioned before, you guys don't know. You, it's a trust thing. You don't know yeah. Jesse. It's like you you don't. How, who is this guy? He could be a snake oil salesman. Look, I started Peace, Love. I started my dog beat cancer off of because I was spreading the news, I was paying it forward on my Peace, Love, and Pit Bulls. People were asking me, where, how do I do this? What, how did you beat it? How did your dog beat it? I introduced them to Jesse. That's why we started My Dog Beat Cancer. He's got the Healing Project, OC Consultants. It's still a Facebook page too, OC? It is, yes. Okay. No, uh, OC Consultants is a Facebook. Is, is Healing? Only. Oh. Yeah, healing and then the other one, our too. website is uh, healing-project.info. I should, uh, oh, info? Yeah. .info. Maybe I should we're gonna have put that. We're gonna, yeah, yeah. Actually, we're gonna put that in this when we. It's all. It's always gonna be in the description. But yeah, I mean, I stake my name of my five hundred one c three nonprofit rescue. I've been doing uh, rescue and training since two thousand ten. I started peaceloveandpitbulls dot org. So you know, look, all I'm doing is this is what we did. This is how my dog, who was given eight weeks to live five years ago, we beat cancer with cannabis oil from cannabis, not hemp. We did the FECO, FECO. We did the um, we did the dog cancer survival guide, and that's why I started this page. So this is my man. This is his lady. We're here to help. Don't mess around with the hemp. If you're gonna fight this cancer, four legs or two, get cannabis. Right. Be strong. Yes. You got this. And with that, I'd like to just let everybody know that. Uh, you know, it is very crazy right now. Things are, you know, I'm not going to harp on what's going on with stuff. But at this point, people, let's be mindful and let's stay, you know, focused on what we're doing to help our dogs. Because uh, regardless of what's happening in the world right now, you know, our dogs are depending on us to help them out. So, you know, anybody yeah. needs uh, to find out any more information, has any questions, reach us on the healing uh, dash project.info site or join our web our uh, Facebook groups and, and we're there. If you go to peaceloveandpitbulls.org it takes you to our Facebook. I have a million um, posts there and you can get directly to uh, the healing-project.info um, um, and we're going to post this on all our Facebook pages as well and this will be in the description if you're watching this um, after we uh, post this on YouTube. Thank you guys. Thank you. One hour. All right guys. Wow.